We now welcome UFC bandwagon Mark De La Rosa. Mark, thank you for the time today, sir. Thank you for having me. We will kick things off with Nolan King from USA Today. Awesome. Hey, Mark. Uh, appreciate going? the time today. And uh, coming into this fight, maybe a little bit of a, a different field in the last couple of fights, as if the world's in a different place. Uh, you're yeah. fighting in an empty arena. Talk to me about how you're feeling coming into this one. Man, I'm feeling hungry. This All this time off, being stuck at home, and now being able to train and stuff, I'm super grateful, super grateful for the opportunity to be able to compete, come to Vegas, and showcase my skills. For sure, man. And we talked to your opponent, uh, Jordan Espinosa, a little while ago, and he said that after back-to-back -back losses for him, he thought that he was going to be cut after his last fight. Uh, you're coming off three losses. Did you kind of have that same scare after you suffered the last loss? No, not really. Like I said, I, I train hard. I don't really backlash the company. All I've been, I've done a lot of favors for the company, taking short notice fights. Like you know what I mean. A lot of the media don't see what goes on behind the scenes. You just see the results of fight night, and it sucks when you come up short. But at the end of the day, I'm always coming to win, and it's a fight, man. Anything can happen. So coming into this one, do you feel any extra added pressure that you're getting this fourth opportunity that you have to perform, or is it just like you just said another fight? No, I mean main thing for me, as far as like pressure for me is. Uh, there's a lot of things I, there's a lot of things I, uh, I'm grateful for just being stuck at home and just seeing people suffer and seeing people not able to pay their bills and able to put food on the table and stuff. So, I definitely I'm coming home with two checks come Saturday night. And I definitely, I'm gonna bring it. And you're in a unique position too because uh, you know obviously your wife Montana is also a UFC fighter. So while you know uh, most fighters don't have that that type of situation in their household. So how nice was it for you to to have the UFC continue despite when everything else is shutting down oh man it's awesome i'm super super grateful for the opportunity and i'm happy i was one of the chosen few for sure and then my last question for you uh talk about jordan espinosa a little bit the matchup um you know he's a guy who's been around you've been around what, what do you expect to see out of him come fight night uh i don't see anything different from him i don't see him a different fight he fights the same every time super athletic super jittery i mean he throws the same combos dances moves super athletic exciting fighter but I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to impose my will and bring a pressure that he's never seen before. Appreciate the time, Mark. Good luck. Thank you. And we will take our next question from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cape Side Press. Hey, Mark. So I want to go back to it. You touched on you know you've taken those short notice fights and you felt like you were in a good spot, but you know with three in a row. Can you just talk about, you know, what do you tell yourself? How do you get in that right mindset to not feel that pressure? Because obviously no one wants to be in that situation in their mm. career. Oh uh, man, like I said, I'm just super, super grateful for the opportunity. I'm able to step in the cage. I'm able to do what I do, do what I love every single day. Like all I do, I'm, all I'm able to do is, besides all this quarantine and stuff, but I'm able to train, teach, coach, and better myself and better people around me. So it just, just being grateful. I'm always grateful for the opportunity to wake up healthy and do what I love. Can you talk about your training? Like, how much were you able to actually get in the gym, even with limited people? Were you doing a lot of road work just, you know, around the neighborhood? Can you talk about what it looked like for you? Uh, I don't want to give too many details because, I mean, things are still kind of shut down back home. But uh, I was, let's just say I was able to get good training in and get my bodies in and then I finished my fight camp in uh, California at Team Oyama and then I finished the last my last two weeks here in Vegas and I was able to use extreme facility and like I got to train like Alex Perez, Louis Smoka and I, I had bodies I constantly had bodies. Gotcha. People always go back to it being married to a fellow UFC fighter. How does that work when you're balancing you know like work and home like is it you stop talking about fights at a certain hour is it no fights at the dinner table <laughs> how does it work in the De La Rosa household uh it's crazy because I mean it's not too, it's it's pretty it's pretty laid back chill because I mean my daughter's a wrestler too so we're constantly all training all we do is eat sleep train but my daughter's like a big big uh TikToker, so she occupies us on our uh, when we're home like eating dinner and stuff you would think we'd be talking about fights and wrestling we're just watching her do some crazy TikToks and dances and stuff, so she's our entertainment show whenever we're at the house. Some parts of the gigs are open, and other parts are closed. You're going to sell when you get the victory. Uh, to be honest, I mean, I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to celebrate in Vegas a little bit that night, but I'm going to stay in shape. I'm going to stay ready, and hopefully they send us both to Fight Island.
Okay, thank you, Mark. Thank you. And we will take our next set of questions from Zach Packlet with UFC.com. We can keep up here for it. Um, okay, so obviously, you know, you, like you said, you have a sense of urgency coming into this fight, but how do you balance that, like, you know, obvious urgency to get a win with sticking to the game plan and making sure you don't fight outside yourself? I just focus on what's in front of me. I've had a good, uh, my coaches do a good job of just keeping my mindset right, reminding me of the task at hand, and just focus on, on fight night. I'm not, again, like I said, only, I mean, y'all bring it up, but I, it's not running through my head at all. I'm just ready to perform, ready to fight, showcase my skills, and give a shout out to my team. It seems like you have a certain amount of uh, confidence or excitement heading into this fight, um, maybe compared to, to your previous ones. Is there is there anything particular that you're feeling that you haven't felt in the last few fights? Uh, uh, just a little, just being able to just change the scenery a little bit, training at like Team Oyama, getting different training partners, different looks, seeing uh, Alex Perez get that dominant win over uh, last week over figure, uh, what's his name, Gamiga, Formiga. Mm -hmm. And uh, just seeing all that, and it's definitely, I'm ready to go. Definitely, definitely got me pumped. And I know you said, like, you know, it's more so the media and other people bringing up. But the people you've lost to are, you know, Kaka, Fernandez, Alex, yeah. and you guys are, you know, shrieking up. So does that not give you confidence because, like, I know a loss is a loss, but you, you think about it, like, you face some of the better fighters in, in the division. Oh, yeah. Like, I've, I've uh, Alex Perez, Kai, like, all these guys. And I've taken those fights on short notice. Yeah. And, like, like I said, at the end of the day, it's a fight. Anything can happen. We can beat each other any given night. Like I said, let me rack up a couple more wins, and I'll start. I'll start uh, calling these guys back out again. Yeah, and given you know UFC's been putting on fights for a while now, but and so the circumstances aren't, usual, aren't as unique maybe as they were a month ago. Mm -hmm. But I think fighters are predisposed to fight in special environments. What's the most unique environment you fought in as you're coming up? Outside, I think I fought in the rain back when I was like an amateur. I fought in the rain in uh, San Antonio, Texas. It was, it was crazy. Yeah, what was that like? I, I imagine that. Slippery. Luckily, <laughs> I got the job done in like a minute. And uh, right before it started raining hard and the event was canceled, it started sprinkling whenever I was fighting. But luckily, I got the job done and they canceled the event right after I got my W. Gotcha. So as you're walking to the octagon, there's not going to be a crowd. It's going to be the apex. It's going to have a little bit of a different look. Um, I don't know what your thought process is when you normally walk to the octagon, but what do you think it's going to be like when you walk into the apex? Uh, to be honest, I've just been watching like all the background stuff and watching these fights and like slowly like prepping myself. And I've been able to use the awesome facility at Extreme Couture, and they have like an awesome like the exact same size cage that they are going to use at the apex. So like we've been simulating that environment a lot, like max. I think like there's like 15 people in the building. I can hear my coaches, I can hear my, the other guy I'm sparring with, or whoever I'm going with, I can hear their coaches. It's, it's to honest, it's going to feel like a, like a sparring session, is what it's going to feel like to me. And last thing for me, like you said, Jordan Espinosa is a guy who's really athletic, mm -hmm. and you, you kind of get a sense of his style. What kind of aspects of your game are you excited to show that he will pull out of you? It just depends what, how he shows up, if he's going to run. I mean, we'll see. We'll see if he wants to stand. It just depends. I just kind of have to set some traps and see what he bites on. And depending what he bites on, I'll be able to display. And are you thinking about the smaller cage at all and how that might change things? Or is it a factor? Uh, I think it's going to, yeah, I do. I think it's going to favor me a lot. It's going to be easier because I know Jordan likes to use his footwork a lot and go left, go right, go lateral and stuff. So it's going to be easier for me to cut that cage off. Gotcha. Thanks, man. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. That is all the questions we have for you. Thank so you. You are good to go. Awesome. Thank you. Oh.